It's the festive season, and you know what that means. Game of the year time. 2019 is a year defined by a huge sense of anticipation, of hearing dribs and drabs about the new console generation coming in 2020. It's exciting stuff, and Microsoft has, of course, already given us a taster with its Xbox Series X announce. That aside, we did have some standout games over the last 12 months, plus genuine surprises to talk about. For me, 2019 saw Capcom's best work in many years. Devil May Cry 5 and Resident Evil 2 Remake thrilled fans, old and new alike, showing an incredible push for quality. We also had a conveyor belt of games converted to Nintendo Switch. I mean, The Witcher 3 ranks among the most ambitious projects for the system to date. Plus, of course, we had the likes of Final Fantasy XII, Overwatch, and Divinity Original Sin 2 land on the system. The list goes on. Sadly, two Goliath releases, Cyberpunk 2077 and The Last of Us Part 2, were pushed back to next year, though there's still a lot to celebrate. Today then, I'm taking a chance to reflect on the year gone by, with a list focused on my top 5 games of 2019. Just a selection of games that, honestly, in my spare time after all the DF work is done, I spent the most time playing. So let's get started. At number 5 is Luigi's Mansion 3, a marvel to play and for me, one of the year's biggest surprises. Just like the GameCube original, Luigi's solo outing is chock full of charm and whimsy. It's brilliantly designed and not just for the technical strengths either, though that is a big part of why I love it. Sticking to an almost Metroidvania style setup, you move between floors of a haunted hotel block, solving puzzles to track down keys. Usually this involves manipulating physics using your vacuum cleaner or simply keeping your eyes peeled for small details. Luigi's Mansion 3 deserves to be seen as more than a sideshow to Mario's appearances. It's lovingly crafted all round. Developer Next Level Games just so happened to produce one of the best looking games on Switch here too, an effort that kept me coming back just to see what the handheld could do. Now, I've spent a whole video waxing fanatical about how this game's cutscenes come together. Luigi's animations are a genuine delight, silly, over the top and wonderfully expressive. Each one of these scenes looks like it's simulating a CG film too, with dynamic lighting, screen space reflections and even what appears to be subsurface scattering on skin. These are often complex techniques and not things I'd usually expect to see on a Nintendo licensed game, and so it really stands out. Next there's the messy fun involving physics. Every room presents itself as a kind of diorama, a self-contained area dense with objects that can be knocked about. Clothes flap and chairs topple, nothing new if you enjoyed the first two, but on Switch it's pushed an extra step further in scale and just messing around with the world is in itself loads of fun. So yes, if you're looking for a sleeper hit on Switch and a way to see what the machine can do, this is very much my pick. At number 4 is Resident Evil 2 Remake. It's an entirely different brand of horror of course. What I especially loved about this is it's a kind of combination of all the best parts of Resident Evil's legacy. I mean it uses the original PlayStation game as a template, a framework for its story, areas and characters. Arguably it's one of the best loved in the series, but this time all the fixed pre-rendered backdrops of that era are replaced using RE Engine's 3D rendering, a technology that was pioneered in Resi 7. Then we have the last element, the gameplay style itself. It takes the over the shoulder third person camera style from Resident Evil's 4 through 6, which for a game like this works really well. Honestly, this just pipped Devil May Cry 5 to the post, another game based on the same engine. So an honorary mention for that, which in its own way has some amazing in-engine visuals. But nobody does horror in quite the same way Capcom does, and Resident Evil 2 Remake combines all the best elements of the series so far in one package. Controls are tight, and it keeps the eerie atmosphere of its inspiration somehow intact, with new shock scares and tweaks to the layout. It's not an exact remake, and personally I'm glad it takes some steps to adapt it for the modern day. Also, it helps it looks gorgeous too. 
Enemies are gruesomely detailed in up-close shots, and with HDR enabled, it was one of my favourite picks for showcasing my OLED TV. Definitely a highlight of 2019. In third place is Sekiro. Ok, this arrived very early in the year, but certainly left a mark for its difficulty. Even by From Software standards actually, the learning curve here is brutal in the way it forces you to learn the ropes of its combat. The fact is, yes, it will put people off early on. It demands close attention to enemy attack patterns and lightning fast reactions. It's unforgiving. The payoff? Well, once you've truly learnt those mechanics, the benefits of a dodge, a jump and a parry, you have all the tools you need to win. At that point, it's hugely satisfying and a complete breath of fresh air after the Soulsborne games. Nothing worthwhile comes easily and for once it's just great to have a game that pushes you to play by its rules rather than sticking to what we know from Dark Souls. There's no question the game is a triumph in overall design. The combat is just hugely satisfying on an audio visual level, especially the way blood bursts from the enemies on a strike. The sound effects lend themselves brilliantly to this sense of impact too. Each crunching body blow gives you powerful feedback in one on one duels. And of course, the level design is among From Software's best. From the Ashina outskirts to the Hirata estate, every part of its world feels unique. And of course, much of it is built with platforming in mind, again branching it away from the developer's other work. Sekiro is an easy pick for my top 5. I still grieve my wife and son. I'm not so cold as to mock your pain. A wise choice, Sub-Zero. Round 1. Fight. At number 2 is Mortal Kombat 11. For my money, this is easily the new high watermark for big budget fighting games. The campaign mode is, as ever, gorgeously constructed on Unreal Engine. And of course, NetherRealm Studios absolutely nails the transitions from gameplay to cutscenes, something the team mastered with Mortal Kombat 9 last generation. It's really the only fighting game I've played that puts such a focus on narrative. Just as well then that the combat itself, the mechanics hold up too. And while admittedly I do prefer Street Fighter 5 this generation anyway, in terms of pure gameplay, you've got to respect the work that's gone into this. Presentation wise, it's a monster of a project, which makes it all the more satisfying to play. You're a dead ringer for your mother. A lot of the game's enjoyment does stem from the technology behind it. For me anyway, it makes a big difference. Impressively, the whole roster is built from scratch with more photorealistic lighting, plus some great facial capture. A bit of a shame I suppose if you missed the huge selection of 9 and the additions in 10, but this really had to be done for this reset to take place. At times the delivery is a bit uncanny valley, though again that adds to the cheesy charm of the story being told. After all, this is a game that delights in being excessive. It works. Oh, and it features some of the best HDR I've seen in a fighting game so far, making the most of those dark arenas with bright spotlights. Mortal Kombat 11 isn't your typical choice for a fighting game, but it's a real highlight of 2019. In first place is Call of Duty Modern Warfare. It's the big series reboot I've been waiting years for, and honestly the best I've played since Modern Warfare 2. It's been a long time since I've been so invested in the series, but Infinity Ward's time revising the engine really paid off. In terms of scale and the quality of its visuals, everything is ramped up. Ok, this is usually the spot where you might expect a kind of curveball entry, something off the radar, a surprise. Call of Duty is a mainstream choice, but I've got to be honest here. In the end, looking back over 2019, there really was no question which game had the highest playing time overall. It's a game that's been tweaked and improved drastically since its launch as well. Multiplayer modes like Shoot House and 3v3 Gunfight were recently added, and there's a sense the whole front menu is always being rotated with new ideas. New ways to play to extract the most from the game. Personally, the multiplayer is the real attraction. I've grown to love the hardcore team deathmatch as my go-to, always an incredibly tense way to play the game. But you've got to hand it to Infinity Ward for its campaign effort as well. The Camden Mansion siege level is clearly the standout. In fact, every mission does something to show off the developer's new tech, a showcase of its features from volumetrics to more open field combat. Again though, all of this feels like a preamble to what the multiplayer offers. 
The Grand War maps aren't for everyone, but it does show Call of Duty finally broaching territory eked out by Battlefield, the big map experience. On that note, there's much more to look forward to as we go into 2020, with the prospect of a Battle Royale mode looming large too. Even without that, Modern Warfare is my game of 2019. It's a robustly built FPS, always been tweaked and improved, and at its core, has some of the most satisfying gunplay in the business. As 2019 draws to a close, all eyes are on the promise of 2020. A new era draws close with Xbox Series X of course, and the new PlayStation. But the new games also look simply incredible, even on our trusty PS4s and Xbox Ones. We have a new Resident Evil 3 remake for one, Cyberpunk, Final Fantasy VII Remake, and The Last of Us Part II all out in the first half. Oh, and let's not forget the new Animal Crossing on Switch. As a swan song to the generation, we've got so much to look forward to. It's usually at this stage of the generation where developers are at the height of their powers, while at the same time looking to port existing experiences to next gen. No matter what machine you own though, 2020 is set to be a banner year, and I can't wait to see how it plays out. Right then, that's me for the rest of the year. It's time to get my holiday started. I'll be right back with John, Alex and Rich in the new year. I'll be on Twitter as well, I'm sure. So if you did want to get in touch, feel free to do so there. Don't forget to like, subscribe and all that jazz and hit the bell for notifications to get any video as soon as it lands. But from all of us, here's wishing you a happy holidays and new year. And from me for now, thanks for watching.